to get into what's trending and see what's happening on the socials. And in studio, I'm joined by Raymond Mudei from the Digital Desk. Raymond, good morning. Good, good to see morning. you. Good <laughs> morning. Good to see you too. Well, let's start with a story that's a bit sad, the Chavakali Boys School accident. Mm -hmm. Give us the details. So, uh, a tragic accident that involved uh, Chavakali Boys High School mm -hmm. uh, students occurred. And sadly, one student uh, tragically lost their life. And in, the incident took around, it, it took place rather around Mamboleo roundabout in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. And people online are weighing, weighing in on this debate. Of course, with the recent spate of accidents, and everybody is really calling the transport CSK Pchumba Murkomen to at least say something about it or do something about it. Of course, authorities are investigating the circumstances surrounding this accident, mm -hmm. as well as another accident that uh, occurred in Salama area that also left 10 people dead. It was a multi-car accident, actually. And Kenyans online are... Uh, actually, this, when this accident was training at number one, Murkomen was training at number two. And this is because, definitely, of uh, the responsibility he has in, in overseeing the transport uh, ministry and averting these accidents, if, if need be. And, of course, everybody is weighing, weighing in on the debate about the NTSA being taken back to the roads, right. the Huru Directive being reversed. And we wait to see what kind of developments come up on this one. Mm -hmm. But Kenyans online have uh, really united in one voice to uh, call Transport CSK Chumba Murkomen to mm -hmm. say something or do something about the recent spate of accidents being witnessed in the country. Right, of course, in the past few weeks, we've seen the number of accidents just going up and a lot of people losing their lives. So, yes. of course, quite timely to talk about that conversation. Yes. But away from that, of course, yesterday mm -hmm. was first April and yes. usually it's <laughs> April Fool's Day. <laughs> Did you fool anybody? Uh, no, I, I actually didn't. Really? <laughs> did you? Did you get? Did you get? I mean, did you get fooled by anyone? Uh, not really. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I know there's a post that was doing rounds with regard to Davido. Davido was in the country yes. this weekend of our concert. That's right. But tell us about that particular <laughs> um, joke. Let me put mm. it that way, because mm. uh, some people do did say actually it was a bit distasteful. What are your thoughts yes, on that? Yes, it was. Actually, some people felt it was a bad joke, a, a joke gone bad. Mm -hmm. It was a post that was doing down, rounds online claiming that Davido had been uh, detained at JKIA, Jomo yeah. Kenyatta International Airport, and had been arrested hauling cocaine in his private jet, Ooh. which was being circulated by one of the big media houses in this country. Yeah. And it was later identified to be an April Fool's prank. And people yeah. were not having it, by the way. Because yeah. by the time it was being identified to be an April Fool's prank, it had already gone viral. Mm -hmm. I actually read that particular article, and there was a caption just right after the caption of the image that says this, this article is actually an April Fool's article. Don't get fooled. Mm. But I think that was too late for them, <laughs> and, yeah. and Kenyans online have already weighed on that. And, and, and DCI also has, mm. has had dismissed it as fake news. Mm -hmm. So Kenyans are also asking, did DCI also get fooled by that particular right. post? We've also seen uh, international correspondent Larry Mado yes. had fooled people that he's moving again from, from uh, CNN back to BBC in Washington. Yeah. And people also uh, made that post go viral. Mm -hmm. and, and now everybody was uh, wishing him a good stay at, at BBC. <laughs> and then yeah. it turned out to be an April Fool's prank. Yeah. And there was a lot of pranks going around. So mm -hmm. Kenyans were also being uh, very skeptical about news because no one knew whether it was a fool, uh, an April Fool's prank mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. So that was generally how April Fool's da uh, Day went down yesterday. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of talk online. Right, yeah. right. Moving away from that now, let's talk about the Nairobi governor, Johnson Sakaja, had some mm. orders put in place, and yes. this is with regard to the Kanjos in the CBD, mm -hmm. and that they arrest any individual who records or takes photos. Mm. Um, do you think, what are your thoughts on that? Mm. Well, before I even say my thoughts, it was, it was interesting to see the governor make such kind of a directive. He was speaking during the meeting with uh, the Kanjos, as they are popularly known, city council as carries. Mm -hmm. And where he gave this directive to arrest people who photograph or take uh, videos of them during raids. Remember that particular incident of that uh, Burundi fellow whose groundnuts were spilled on the ground? Right. And then there was yeah. a lot of uh, uproar online. Yeah. So the governor felt as if this was uh, cloud chasing. He actually said it. And, and people who are now using this as a means of defending themselves from you know, following the law, as he said it. Mm -hmm. And he said this country, this county rather, must be a county of order, in his own words. But people online felt uh, a bit different on this one because everybody is saying now this will give them the leeway to at least 
exercise their powers or go overboard with their powers mm -hmm. and, and mistreat hawkers and other workers in the city. Mm -hmm. And as he claims, this move is part of maintaining order, but <laughs> I'm not really sure if, if that's how Kenyans will take it. Because mm -hmm. be that as it may, social media also has a lot of impact mm -hmm. on how these people carry out their businesses, you know, even for people really publicizing some things that are not going right and for them taking action. So I think this one is something we're going to watch closely mm -hmm. and how it will be executed. Yeah. But Kenyans online have had a lot to say about this. Right, I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure of that. Let's move on to our final story now mm -hmm. about um, a student, a former Moi University student who was a law student yes. whose marks has been missing and he actually left the school in 2011 mm -hmm. but has been camping outside the school. Tell us about that story. Yes, so he's a former law student, as you rightly said, mm -hmm. from Moi University. He has come to the university for university gate for four days now. Mm -hmm. He has refused to eat, as it, as, as it is being reported by people on the ground. He has refused to eat and has refused to leave. Mm -hmm. And sources also say that he, he is speaking incoherently in some legal jargon. So people are right. asking, is he all right, really? But missing marks has been a perennial issue. Even, even when I was in school, actually, there was a lot of cases of missing marks. Mm -hmm. But this one has, has uh, caught the eye of Kenyans because people are asking, how broken can the system be for 13 years yeah. for a man not to find his marks and be able to graduate from the university? Remember, this law student has blamed the university for uh, sabotaging his graduation. And the incident also highlighted the issue of missing marks in public universities, private universities. So it is a debate that is ongoing online, and people are now asking the university to take charge of this one and mm. ensure that this uh, law student graduates. But it's interesting because some of these conversations are very personal to some of us when <laughs> you hear about missing marks yeah. <laughs> and then coming off of a graduation. And you know, graduation is celebrated mm. mainly because you've finished school. But in some instances, I've seen people celebrate graduation because they finally graduated, yeah. even with the issue of missing marks. Mm. So it's a debate that is go ongoing online, and we wait to see if the university will respond on this one. Yeah, I, I hope he gets his marks, really. Like Absolutely. 13 years is a lot of time. That's a lot of time. Right. Raymond, thank you so much for your time, telling thank us you. what's happening on the socials. Um, I want us to take a short commercial break here on News Diary. We'll be back with more stories. Stay with us.